Hello, this video is a general overview of the findings we made during the two expeditions in the spring of 2018. The most important of which, by far, are the single tracks, kind of motorbike-like tracks of ancient vehicles in the Rodopi Mountains of Bulgaria, which seem to turn on and off between what we would describe as uh, normal-looking vehicle tracks from motorbikes because they are single and kind of uh, jolt marks as if something was slightly bouncing as it was moving slightly above the Earth's surface. These are the areas which the expeditions covered in March in Turkey and in April in Bulgaria. So, we knew already about the vast fields covered with countless tracks in Malta and Turkey in particular and many other countries as well in not such high concentration. And initially as we found them, yes, we confirmed all the unexplained mysteries about them and that they definitely look as if they have been left by some sort of uh, vehicles, something like sleds, maybe, when the ground surface was still soft. And yes, exactly as we have heard, besides the tracks, there were countless marks on the stones, cuttings, or maybe it was dug out when this was soft earth, before it got petrified. The amount of such regular geometric marks on the stone was overwhelming, but there was no clue who, when, why, or what was it. Starting with the very first site of unexplored tracks which we found, it was always the same until the end. More and more new questions without much of a definitive answers to the ones we already have on file. So, at this site in the vicinity of Aslantash, some of the alleged vehicles followed the uneven surface as they do usually and went uphill I mean this mini hill but then others apparently decided to take a shortcut and went through the hill thus making two passages through this small hill and while doing so they left uh, plenty of what we used to call tractor marks. Now I call them like bouncing or jolting marks. And in addition, in one of the passages, the lines from the scraping, presumably on the side, are horizontal, while in the other one they are vertical. the tracks left on the top of the small hill, they get interrupted by the two passages. Initially, I was interpreting this as uh, obviously the passage was made after the first tracks were left on the top, but now, after I saw everything that was about to come yet in Bulgaria, I'm not sure anymore 
even if these vehicles, if they were vehicles at all, were leaving these marks by having their wheels touch the ground or alternatively they were sliding on the ground because such assumptions may end up to be wrong altogether maybe these things they were not even touching the ground and the tracks we see could have been left by some sort of a stream of energy or matter produced by them they could have been some sort of hovercrafts on cushion or they could have been similar to what we now call maglev trains also we are talking about even maglev cars nowadays and then on the next day as we were driving back to the hotel somebody spotted a beautiful nature spot and suggested that we take a walk there. We went for a walk just to find even more new sites with tracks which placed even more questions. Yes, um, at three or four spots in Italy we did see something that very much resembled footprints, right? On the tracks, but now it, it's becoming a pattern. So they definitely look like human footprints, they even have like left and right. But this doesn't explain everything. Why do they start and stop suddenly if the surface was all soft? So that the tracks could be left in the soft surface. And then why do we see them always exactly on the tracks and never besides them? One thing we noticed for sure in Italy and in Turkey that this happens to the tracks when they pass through some place which is steep. So it does seem after all that there was some connection between the countless rock cut ruins in Turkey and the tracks because we found tracks starting appearing right at the gate the entrance of a remains of a rocket castle the tracks definitely are on a solid bedrock visibly well connected to the rest of the rocket structure on one side this provides some clarity at least in sense of the connection between the rocket ruins and the tracks but then as we know from previous research the tracks seem to have been left in soft surface so what was the stone out of which the stone castle is made also soft because it's the same material it, it is it is the same bedrock if the stone castle was soft as well, how would the walls and the ceilings stand? The only possible hypothesis which uh, has come to my mind so far, and I'm not saying this is the most likely explanation, but it is the only one that makes at least a little bit sense until now, is that uh, this alleged vehicles and they were producing some sort of stream of energy which was melting the stone below or the earth below as they were moving near it near the surface and i dare to mention such a brave hypothesis such a suggestion not because i think it is uh, very likely but just to show you what kind of ideas we need to be getting and exploring, working on when looking at these tracks, how much we have to widen our scope so that we can have even working hypotheses 
because not only me, but also the other people in the group and other people who have studied the tracks in depth reach the same conclusion. Forget about something that can be proven or something that seems likely. It is hard to find a hypothesis which will make even sense about the tracks. Our first site with tracks in Bulgaria was Fort Ovech. There was a long pair of tracks, actually a couple of them, and they were very similar to the tracks we've seen in Turkey, Italy and Spain. As usually, again, unfortunately the ancient road was badly damaged by the modern construction of a wooden structure, a pathway for the tourists. A pathway designed in such a way that it will channel their attention to the fort, which despite the information on the tourist boards around is mostly a modern building. The tourist information boards distract people's attention from the actual real important ruins which are the old roads and the rock cut ruins around them. The so-called historians thought that it is of great importance to invest lots of money in building a modern fort and fences to control the tourists and of course extract money from them but these so-called historians didn't think it is of any importance to actually dig out the old rock cut ruins that was a nice excavation yeah nobody cared to to look mm. After that, when we went to the Rodopi Mountains region of Bulgaria, we found a very unique and new type of site with tracks. They were all single and the trail was stretching for at least half a kilometer. Although many of them are to be observed in clusters, we didn't find, at least in this region, even one instance where they looked like a pair. They were all what I would previously call motorbike tracks. And although we found the um, jolting tracks, so to say, at least at uh, three, four places in this region, certainly it is this last site which shows most clearly how tracks turn into something like bouncing or jolting marks. And it was after this site in particular when I actually 
started uh, taking more seriously the possibility that um, these were not tracks left by something mechanical, but rather left by a flow of energy or some sort of matter from something that was hovering above ground. Here, just a couple of meters after the tracks turned into bouncing marks, they turned back into standard tracks just for a couple of meters and then they turn into staircase tracks before they disappear beneath the boulders of the stone which was cleared away when they were making the road in the vicinity. The second most interesting area in which I learned new things about during these two expeditions was the topic about growing living stones. A thread which I started actually earlier with this video. So I published the video in September last year and a few hours before departing for Turkey I found out that it's not even news. Even the mainstream geologists knew all about it but they just forgot to tell us. So I'm gonna tell you all details about this in the future video which will cover all this in detail. But for now I'm gonna make the long story short and um, when I arrived in Turkey and saw the clear horizontal layers this is for example the Love Valley in Cappadocia initially the faith in my own previous statements started shaking eventually when I started looking into minor details it turned out that the case is the same as the tracks I was on the right track in deciphering what's going on but the technicalities of all it are much more complicated than I expected initially some amongst these details are numerous cores or kind of eggs from which the stone was growing. Some of them look literally like stone eggs, inclusions of something seemingly foreign compared to the stone around. Others are just a kind of, of different coloring. The color serves as a main indicator that something is uh, going on around this center and then the finely chopped and often completely fresh wood which to our utter surprise was uh, absolutely uniformly distributed in uh, very thick layers of stone in Cappadocia. And then I started paying attention to these lines 
in the stones. We are programmed to confuse them with cracks. But although cracks eventually will tend to appear on these very same places, because there are divisions in the stone. Originally, they were not cracks, as we are going to show you conclusively in future videos. And, as you can easily see if you go out in nature and spend enough time looking. So, these stitches, these lines in the stone, they are very, very interesting. They are two amphitheater-like stone structures at the site in Bulgaria called Harmankayan. Officially, they are, of course, rock cut. After looking at them carefully, we are, like, divided 50-50 whether they're natural or really rock cut. It's entirely possible that neither of these two options are correct. And these anti-theatrical shapes appeared as a result of these cracks, which appeared on the places where some of these suspicious lines on the stones were. How did these lines align like an amphitheater? Well, people in the past were much more attuned with Mother Nature and the natural processes. Their psyche was plugged into those channels. And maybe they would be able to manipulate somehow the growing of stone around them. Or, if it wasn't them... Then it was the engineers who built this theater stage, which we call Planet Earth. Oh, you're ready for service? Yes, please. <laughs> the amount of rock cut ruins in Turkey is just mind-blowing. Simply by driving around casually without having an address or even an approximate area at which you are aiming, you will see so many complexes without name not mentioned in any historic research obviously not excavated or used for modern agriculture or for keeping animals it's just so many of them how many millions of people have lived in them we have no clue and nobody seems to care but what is worse is that we can't even imagine what kind of people were they?
most certainly, it was the early Christians who were the last rock cutters. But their contribution is very small in terms of percentage of the total ruins, rock cut ruins, which are to be found. And we also see that in many cases, it is clearly visible that they were simply reshaping and readapting already existing older sites in various regions. But how much do we know about the people who were the original rock cutters? Who did most of the work? Practically nothing. Besides that they were nature people. Because the mainstream historians are simply not interested in them. They don't even acknowledge their existence as a group of people. Whenever they find unexplained ruins, they just attribute it to some local tribe of any historic period, just to make it fit somewhere. They even remain blind to the fact that there is a uniform style of building stretching over continents. They just don't want to acknowledge even that. As far as the alternative researchers, because it, uh, the rock cut ruins are not um, very much high tech or don't seem to be connected with the UFOs or reptilians, it means they are not interesting. But then who is left? Who will find out who were really the people who left behind undoubtedly the biggest heritage in terms of ruins. Nothing can compare with the amount of rock ruins which we have because they cover continents. And not just in Turkey, in Bulgaria as well, we saw rock-cut ruins, which are so old, they are barely recognizable as such. Most of the sites we visited in both Turkey and Bulgaria simply lay abandoned. It seems that the interest in them, on the side of official historians and the general public, is very, very slim. Fortunately, the historians don't want to deal with them, and that's lucky because wherever they have put their hands and made a given site famous and commercial, they tend to, after that, ruin it with so-called restoration. Ironically, the only couple of places at which we saw some tourists visiting those were in Turkey, the places were made famous by the package holiday companies and the sites themselves were almost completely destroyed, cemented over, painted over, built over with all kinds of touristy stuff so that nothing is left from the original spirit of the place. And it is only a very small and peculiar group of people who sometimes wonder 
to these wild and abandoned places. People who live on the fringe of the modern society. So some of these fringe people, they are interested in how exactly the ancient people felt the pulse of the earth and the spirits of everything around, including things which we now label as non-living, like stones. So some of these curious French people, they are also sometimes interested in discovering how did the ancient connect with the forces of nature and the forces of the protector gods to manage their daily life around, including making their dwellings. This type of French people are our only hope. If some of them manage to really channel information from the bygone ages and see who, how and why cut all these rooms in the rocks, only then we may really find out. Otherwise, I don't see any hope. Too much has been washed away by the time and the water. So this was a really very short and general overview of all the things we saw during the two expeditions in Turkey and Bulgaria. Of course, the full details will be published in the future videos. There is much more, like for example, Hatusha. And of course, my favorite, Elf Castles. Just look at the remains of this corridor or maybe a staircase. It is already one floor above than the rest of the ruins, which means that we probably see a very small fraction, like maybe the basement only of the full thing. This is the same corridor from another angle. Well, most likely, at least 90% of the ruins are simply missing. And that's why we see strange looking remains, like a small segment of a staircase on a vertical boulder. And by the way, next to this staircase, here there are scoop cutting marks on the stone. Very similar to those found in Aswan, although not as uniform as the Aswan marks. And we found same in Italy and in Spain on similar sites. And of course, this is modern work. <laughs>